Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is November 27th, 2013. The fallout from the Carl Froch, George Groves fight continues. Now you have boxing insiders, right? Adam Booth, Groves' former trainer. Also former champion, Johnny Nelson, both weighing in and saying that Carl Froch needs to step away from the sport. Now what I'm going to say is going to sound absolutely absurd to many of you. But it's a point of view I think that needs to be aired, right? This is my point of view. And that point of view is simply that whoever officially won the fight last weekend, just understand boxing is a public perception game. The real winner, clearly, in the eyes of the public, was George Groves. He's the person who most changed public opinion in that fight. And as I said in an earlier video, the ultimate judges of these boxing matches are the fans, the boxing public. Whoever they told us want to fight, the fans are going to think on their own, right? They're going to reward who they think won the fight. Now, it's clear that Carl Froch fell short in the court of public opinion. Right? The pre-fight hype had Carl Froch knocking down George Groves in sparring, using bigger gloves, wearing headgear. Right, Carl Froch himself, before the fight, said that once he started touching Groves, this was going to be the end of the fight. Right, This is almost a worst-case scenario for Carl Froch. I say almost because he won the fight. It could have been worse. Right? But understand, George Groves never hit the canvas. Worse yet, you have people openly saying this was a bad stoppage. This was an error by the referee. At a minimum, Carl Froch's punching power didn't translate the way he advertised it would translate. Right? Also, the speed gap was so profound. That, esteemed people, are calling for him to quit. The idea is that he's been exposed. That this wasn't an off night. This is actually the future. That the hand speed problem is so bad that if he gets in the ring again with George Groves, or if he gets in the ring with James DeGale, he's going to be undressed. Right? Now... Let me say this. People know my bias. Right? When I see a fighter in his 30s, the guy has already cashed big checks. Fight fans know the fighter. The fighter's already made a mark on the sport. Right? The fighter has satisfied some lifelong dreams. He's reached the top of at least one mountain, right? He's been a champion. He's been in big fights. People know him, right? When I see a guy like Lennox Lewis, a generation ago, right, who had a nice run as heavyweight champion, right? The run is even better than we think, because quite frankly, I think we all know he won that first Evander Holyfield fight, right? The official record has some blemishes that really shouldn't be blemishes, right? Well, when you see him in the ring against a younger lion, Vitaly Klitschko, a fight that still shakes me, and Vitaly is not only hanging with Lewis, but there are moments in that fight where you're thinking, How's Lewis going to win this? You know, is 
Lewis good enough to beat this guy, right? And when Lewis escapes, just like Carl Frotch escaped, right? Same type thing in a sense. Lewis escaped with the stoppage because the fight was stopped on cuts. I think we all know here that if Italy Klitschko isn't cut, and that fight goes the exact way that it went, and were that fight to continue into the later rounds, I'm not saying I know with certainty who would win the fight. Lewis was landing that overhand right over the top as the fight progressed. But what I do know is there was a chance, and it was palpable, that Vitaly Klitschko would have won that fight. And had he won that fight, the Lennox Lewis book would have had a cloudy ending. Right? Lewis would have been beaten, would have lost his title. The logical person for him to fight after that would have been the man who just beat him, Vitaly Klitschko. Who knows what would have happened in that rematch? Could have been worse. Could have ended even more badly. Right? Instead, Lewis got a nice farewell gift. He won that Klitschko fight. Then Lewis did something I hope more fighters do. He rode off into the sunset with a legacy. Retired as the champion. When you see Lennox Lewis sitting ringside, you don't even think of him as a former champion. You think of him as the champion, right? As a standard in the sport. You know, of all the fighters out there, when you think, how would I want to retire? I'm not sure if it gets any better than retiring as the champion after a distinguished run. Where people are openly talking about you as being one of the best ever in your weight class. That's a best case scenario for fighters. Now let's talk about the winners from last weekend, right? Clearly, Carl Frotch lost the fight in the court of public opinion. And let me just say, that's the court that matters. Now, Carl Frotch can unring the bell if there's a rematch with George Groves and he dominates George Groves. Then we'll say, oh, Carl Frotch had a bad night. Or we might say, whatever happened on that night, Carl Frotch redeemed himself. He's still, in the word of Chuck, Chuck Berry, the great musician, he's still true. Right? Fair enough. But understand, there were other winners. Because boxing's really almost like a political situation. Right? Right now, George Groves clearly has a raised profile. So, too, does James DeGale. In the UK now, there's an active discussion. Who's the best 168-pounder in the country? Right now, we're looking back at that Groves to Gale fight, and we're asking the question. Was this the fight between the two best at 168? Right? Understand, boxing is tribal. It's a different group that supported Nigel Ben vis-a-vis the group that supported Chris Eubank. They're different groups. There's not a lot of overlap, right? You remember the Oscar De La Hoya-Fernando Vargas fight. Folks, those were different groups, right? The De La Hoya people were a different group than the Vargas supporters. Right? The Frotch group was a different group than the group supporting George Groves. I know some casual fans are saying, hey, great, I'm just hoping for a good fight. They're in the minority. Right? What really goes on in boxing is you latch on to a fighter who's creating buzz. Then as that fighter rises through the ranks, you look around and that fighter has attracted a group that's loyal to him, 
right? These are the great fighters, right? The Mayweather group knows that their man is better than Manny Pacquiao. The Pacquiao group knows that politics is keeping Pacquiao from fighting and beating Mayweather. Talk to a Pacquiao person. They'll tell you, our guy is too fast. Our guy has too much volume. What's Floyd Mayweather going to do in the ring that we haven't seen? Right? The Canelo group. I was in Vegas. I'm telling you, as I walked down the street in Las Vegas, you had groups. I'm talking about literally groups on the sidewalk wearing headbands, carrying flags blowing horns, convinced that they were not there for a fight. Rather, the weekend of the Canelo Floyd Mayweather fight, they were there for a coronation, right? And so consider boxing really to be the United Nations, right? I'm just here to tell you that James DeGale won big last weekend. The DeGale people believed before that weekend that they were robbed against George Groves and that their guy was the uncrowned king. I'm just here to tell you the Andre Ward group won big because of course Ward hasn't had too many competitive fights. Ward has lapped opponents so badly that people look at the Ward Carl Frotch fight as one of the more competitive fights Ward has had. Now that Carl Frotch has dropped a notch in the public opinion, Ward doesn't seem to have any peer at 168 pounds. Let me just say this I know that the Gale people think otherwise, right? Ultimately, those two guys are going to have to meet in the ring to figure it out. Let me go one step further. I know the Groves people are asking themselves, we've already beaten the Gale. Weren't we on the road to beat Carl Frotch? Isn't George Groves, in fact, being a saint when he claims he's not ready for Andre Ward? Isn't he ready right now right so just to understand that fight has big time fallout now let's talk about whether Carl Frotz should retire let me say this Yusef Mack does have hand speed Lucien Butte certainly has hand speed Carl Frotz beat both of them right but I will say a very close inspection of Carl Frotch's record shows that he really hasn't fought a lot of guys with hand speed of late. And in this modern era of boxing, where guys fight not every other month, right? Take a look at Ray Robinson's record. But let's say twice a year. A fighter could literally have fights against opponents like Arthur Abraham. Mikael Kessler, right? Guys who aren't that blessed with hand speed. And win those fights in a way where the public's convinced that the guy actually deals with hand speed better than he does. Now, given my bias, given my love of people like Lennox Lewis, given the fact that I look at Rocky Marciano's exit from the sport and I think, Way to go. Leave the sport officially unbeaten. You can imagine, and given that I've watched the sport long enough to see guys who I remember as being eloquent, quick, great interviews. Ali comes to mind. One of the best boxing interviews I've seen. I mean, you know, ongoing celebrities in the sport I've seen. Great interview. 
You wanted Ali's opinion on everything. And I've seen him now unable to give interviews, right? I've seen fighters who I remember being real crisp talkers. Now with slower, what appears to be slurred speech. Given the brutality of the sport, right? Anytime a fighter gets to be in his mid-30s with the career accomplishments of a Carl Froch, I hope the guy retires. Quite frankly, I'm surprised Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather are still fighting. Right now, that said, is there a future for Carl Froch in the sport? If he wants it, absolutely. Right? Lucien Butte is fighting Jean Pascal at 175 pounds. Carl Froch has already beaten Lucien Butte. Canada is a boxing hotbed. If you don't know, you need to find out just how packed the Bell Center gets for big fights. That's a boxing hotbed. You're telling me if Butte upsets Jean Pascal. You're telling me that a Carl Froch Lucien Butte fight at 175 pounds wouldn't sell out the Bell Center? Let's think this through even further. Tony Bellew is fighting Adonis Stevenson. Now I know 175 is one floor up from 168. But didn't Andre Ward destroy Chad Dawson? Isn't Carl Froch, at a minimum, an above-average puncher at 168? Isn't Carl Froch the kind of technical fighter who, you know, can literally have his skills give him a chance of winning a fight against a bigger man? If Tony Bellew upsets Adonis Stevenson, and I like Stevenson in that fight, but if, if Bellew pulls the upset, you're telling me that Tony Bellew against Carl Froch doesn't sell out arenas all throughout the United Kingdom? Aren't there several cities in the United Kingdom that they could fight in where it would be a box office smash and an instant sellout? You saw how fast the tickets sold for Carl Froch, George Groves. Let me also point out, too, that a few years ago, we looked at Bernard Hopkins. He had lost to Jermaine Taylor. And people said, Bernard, it's time to get out of the sport. Right? Bernard, like Carl Froch, was a little bit older. Right? Bernard, like Carl Froch, had had success in the ring. Right? As I like to say, Bernard's one of the top middleweight champions in the history of the sport. Right? And keep in mind, Bernard now is fighting at light heavy. Bernard had a lot of success. People said, you know what, Bernard, just like they're saying with Carl Froch, they said, your hand speed's not the best. Right? Hopkins, just like Carl Froch, was a technician in the ring who didn't really rely on physical gifts. Right? You know, he wasn't a guy relying on quick reflexes. He was relying on technique, just like Carl Froch. And, of course, a lot of people said, Carl, enough's enough. Aren't you old enough? Isn't this the time in a fighter's career where the fighter starts getting hurt? And then, of course, Bernard Hopkins decided to continue fighting, changed weight class, and suddenly started taking out much younger lions. Unbeaten Kelly Pavlik. Right? Light heavyweight champion, Jean Pascal. The list goes on and on, folks, right? Um, Winky Wright. Uh, Bernard literally, you know, has gone on a rampage to Varus Cloud, where he's had many fights and has beaten many guys who we thought he'd have a problem with, right? Because technique and know-how matters. Now, I'll agree, Carl Froch looked awfully slow against George Groves. At this point in his career, if I'm Carl Froch, and if I want to continue my career, I would move on to the 175-pound weight class. 168, the water is too deep 
right now. I know that sounds crazy when we're talking about a reigning champion. But I think the Gale, as I've been saying here for a long time, as people know, I think the Gale beats Carl Frotch. I think George Groves wins the rematch. Right? I think Saki Obika is a much tougher fighter than the public realizes. I'm impressed by Marco Antonio Parabin. Right? Andre Ward is still Andre Ward. I think the situation is so clogged up at 168. And I do believe Carl Frotch's game has shown some signs of age. So if I'm Frotch, I move to 175. I believe there's much less risk to his legacy. If he goes to 175, and if, let's say, he has a spirited fight against Lucien Boudin, <coughs> <coughs> more spirited than I am. <laughs> if he has a spirited fight against Lucien Boutte, and let's say Boutte gets the nod in the rematch, there's a third fight. There's a trilogy. There's yet another payday. Right? If he fights someone and gets destroyed, let's say he fights Adonis Stevenson, who is one of boxing's hardest punchers. And, of course, Stevenson's right now in a heavier weight class than Carl Frotch. If he fights Adonis Stevenson and gets destroyed, then the storyline's a little bit different. The storyline is Carl Frotch, a 168-pounder, strayed out of his weight class, gained weight, and couldn't handle the extra weight. I believe that ending to a career is better than Carl Frotch got toppled by countryman George Groves. Won the first fight controversially. Think Roy Jones, Antonio Tarver, right? Gets destroyed in the rematch. Ask yourself, didn't that rematch between Jones and Tarver really put a negative spin on Roy Jones' legacy? Didn't it further put a negative spin on their first fight that Roy Jones won. Right? If I'm Carl Frotch, I think hard about that. Because if he doesn't fight George Groves next, it's going to look like he's dodging George Groves. If he fights George Groves and he gets destroyed, he's going to look like Lennox Lewis would have looked had Lewis fought Vitaly Klitschko again and gotten destroyed. Right? So in my opinion... Should Carl Frotch retire? If I were him, I would. But of course, I'm biased toward fighters who have reached the top of the mountain retiring in their mid-30s, right? Can Carl Frotch continue his career if he wants? I say absolutely. But he's going to have to be creative, and he's going to have to move on from 168. He's already fought and lost to Andre Ward. Right now, every young lion is calling him out, right? At 175, he would find a fighter he's already beaten, Lucien Boutte, a champion who's in his mid-30s like he is, Adonis Stevenson, right? He would find guys who, right now, aren't as fast as Andre Ward, right? He would find some guys whose chins might not be world-class. That's you, Chad Dawson. Right? There would be intrigue. There could also be big paydays. If Tony Bellew suddenly rules the roost <clears throat> at 175, a Frotch Bellew match would be for the title at 175. Were Frotch to win that fight, I believe his legacy would experience a nice renaissance. Just like Bernard Hopkins' legacy experienced the renaissance when he beat Antonio Tarver for the light heavyweight championship. Let me hear from you. You don't have to agree with me, obviously. This is the rough neighborhood part of the internet. Let me hear from you. You tell us who won, in your opinion, in the court of public opinion, that Frotch Groves fight. You tell us what would happen in a rematch. Tell us who is the best super middleweight in Europe right now. If you want, tell us who wins. 
Groves Ward, the Gale Ward, Frotch, Butte at 175 pounds, Frotch Bellu, Frotch Stevenson. Thanks for stopping by.